Hello there everybody, What Culture's Adam Cleary here, and if you have been anywhere near the internet in the past like two days, you've probably seen some stuff about GameStop and stonks and shorts and hedge funds and all of that, and you've probably been talking about it loads, but not really understanding it. And I know this because I've spent the last two days talking about it loads, and it's become apparent that nobody understands it. But I just about do, like just about understand it. I'm like the only person at What Culture who's probably qualified to talk to you about it, not because I'm cleverer than anybody or anything, just I'm the only person who watched the movie The Big Short and actually enjoyed it. So I'm going to try and explain the whole GameStop situation to you right now. I'm only going to explain the GameStop situation to you now and things that are relevant to that, by the way, because if I try and explain, like, the general principle of the stock market or anything like that, you'll probably just realise that money is completely made up and doesn't really exist anyway, and you'll spend the rest of the day walking around like this, and we don't want that. And also, before I start, I know we've given this a headline, something like how gaming just destroyed the stock market, and that is, on the one hand, absurd, ridiculous hyperbole, but on the other hand, it might actually be kind of true. Like, this is on the gaming channel because this is a gaming story, but to say that the GameStop stuff is a gaming story is also like saying Pearl Harbor was a local Hawaiian news story. Like, yes, that is technically true, but does completely miss the point. So yes, my name is Adam Cleary, and this is the entire GameStop situation explained. All right, so before we start, it's important that you know what GameStop is and why in particular it's GameStop that all of this is focusing around. Now, if you're in America, you probably know what it is already, but just in case you don't, it is this huge retail empire of gaming outlets. They sell new games, they buy secondhand games, there is a resale market on there. They are stores about 5,000 strong across the US, rest of North America, some in Europe, some all over the place. They're a fairly big deal, but right now, they are struggling. Like, think about it. They sell physical copies of games. They buy your old physical copies of games and try to sell those physical copies of games on to other people. I don't know if you've noticed anything about the gaming industry the last few years, but they do not want you to do that. They want you to download them directly from the stores themselves. They don't want you to sell them on. They don't want this secondhand industry to exist. And when your business model is entirely dependent on another business model that you are at odds with, you are going to struggle. And as a result, GameStop has been struggling. And of course, there is the whole issue of there being a large pandemic. So even if you are one of the minority of people who still like to buy physical copies and then sell those physical copies and then buy other people's old physical copies, you haven't really been able to. You cannot basically imagine a company who are having a worse 12 months than somewhere like GameStop. So when you have a company like that, it becomes a bit of a target for what is known as shorting. Like, the way the stock market normally works is you buy low and then you sell high. You basically buy stocks in a company that you think is going to grow, and then when those stocks grow, you sell them for a profit. That's how it normally works, but there is kind of the inverse way of playing it, which is known as shorting. Now I know, I know, I'm not Margot Robbie in a bath. She looks like this. But there is still a pretty simple way to explain all that, right? Now, let's say that I am what culture, and you are a hedge fund manager or a trader or just someone who plays the stock markets, and you are convinced that my share price, what culture share price, is going to plummet. I mean, it doesn't matter why you think that. Let's say you've heard that someone's put a hit out on Simon Miller or something. Either way, you think that the value of me is going to plummet, but you want to try and make some money out of that. And the way you would do that is you would borrow shares from me. You wouldn't buy them off me. You would just borrow them, which is a whole other side thing in playing the stock market. Basically, if you have stocks, they don't do anything for you while they're just sitting there not being bought or sold. So people will lend them out for a very small fee, which you do have to pay. Yes, but if you're going to make billions off of all this, you don't really mind paying that fee. So that's just ignore that. You can just borrow stocks. That's a whole other thing. So you borrow one stock, one share from me, okay? I give one to you under the condition that you will give that back to me after a set amount of time. So you have one share that you didn't pay for, you are just borrowing. You then go and immediately sell that share. So let's say at the time my shares are worth $10. So you borrowed a $10 share from me and you immediately go and sell that for $10. You have made yourself 
$10. Now you are betting that my stock price is going to go way, way, way down. So you wait, then all of a sudden, Simon Miller goes back to his home planet, billions are wiped off the value of what culture, and all of a sudden that one $10 share is now worth $3. So knowing that you have to give me back my share, you go buy the share back for $3 and give it to me. You have made $7. You get it because you borrowed it for free, then you sold it for 10, and you bought it back for three. So $7, you've made that. Now scale that up into the millions and the billions, and this is what hedge funds do when they're trying to short a company. And as I'm sure you can imagine, looking at the future of GameStop, they probably thought, wow, that stock price is gonna go down loads and loads and loads. So people bought millions of dollars, millions of dollars in shares of GameStop, expecting it to go down but the problem is they got cocky about it they got lax they overexposed their position and people on reddit found out that they were doing this found out that they were trying to make millions off the impending closure of a company which employs lots and lots and lots of people enter wall street bet which is a reddit forum which has been offering trade tips for years and years and years and years has its own language has its own meme culture it's got millions of people on that thread and basically they got wind of this and all bandied together. So over the past six months, what they've done is they have gone and bought up all of the stocks in GameStop, knowing that all these hedge funds were borrowing them and would eventually have to buy them back in order to return them to the company. Now, the problem with that is because they bought them up, the price did not go down. The price started to go up and up and up and up. So as all these hedge funds soon had to start returning them, instead of buying them back at a profit, they started buying them back at a massive loss because they had to buy them back whatever the price was. Don't get me wrong, this is part of the risk of doing shorts. You kind of expect these things to go down, but there is also the chance it might go up, but it probably won't go up that much. So it is a gamble, but normally it's kind of got big returns and only slightly low risk. You don't expect the share price to go up 359%, wiping literally $6 billion out of these hedge funds. Six billion they lost. Just to round that up in a really simple way, these hedge funds borrowed these stocks, expecting the prices of them to go down. So they sold them at a set price. Reddit got wind of it, bought up all the stock they could, which forced the price up and up and up and up. So by the time the hedge funds had to go return these stocks, they just had to buy whatever was out there. And it was grossly inflated from what they sold it for. Basically meaning that if you take that analogy I gave you before, you buy one stock of what culture from me for $10 and then me and Jules and Scott and Ewan and Josh, we all get together and we go and buy up all that stock and we sell it back to you for $300. That's what happened. And the thing is, this has always been a thing that could have happened. Like there's always been the potential for people to band together like this in this kind of number and take on hedge funds in this manner. But just, it hasn't happened. The groundwork hasn't been fertile. There hasn't been a company in such a perfect position for this to happen. There haven't been hedge funds so badly overexposing themselves on a company like this. And also, social media like genuinely this could have always happened but there's never been a way to organize people to make it happen like this is always a thing that's existed always a risk these hedge funds are running but this is the first time it's ever really bitten them back quite this hard just if you're wondering why they would do all of this by the way if you're trying to think there's some kind of amazing financial plan in action here like there is not like they literally call stocks stonks because that's just a funnier way of saying stocks. That's pretty much all this is. And there's also an element of class warfare in all of this. Like hedge funds and the financial sector have been manipulating the industry for decades and decades in order to make themselves more and more money. Like the amount of people who are struggling over the past 12 months with everything that's going on out there, the richest have only got richer. They've managed to manipulate these markets in order to make themselves more money while the rest of us struggle. So yeah, there is an element of almost vigilante justice in this from Reddit. But there's loads of techniques these hedge funds can use to do the opposite. They can do things called pump and dumps where you just buy loads of stocks so it inflates the price and you sell it straight away even though it's all just going to collapse on itself. That manipulates the market. There was the dot-com bubble. There was the property bubble. All these things that have gone spectacularly wrong in the financial sector over the last, like... 15 to 20 years are just exactly the same as this is. It's just that it's not rich people who are benefiting from it, which is why it's a huge story. I mean, I say it's not rich people who are benefiting from it. Some of the Reddit users involved in this are now incredibly rich. I think the person who's made the most of it is something like $15 million richer with another 10, 20 million still in stocks if they manage to shift them for the price they're, they're currently worth. So 
yeah, it's making a lot of normal people very, very rich. I'll get on to whether or not all this is a good thing or not in a little bit, but you have to admit there is something just incredibly funny about the idea that some hedge fund manager is now having to explain to his or her boss that they've been financially outmaneuvered to the tune of billions of dollars by just somebody with the username potato in my ass. Now, if this all sounds a lot like just mad gambling to you, then yeah, another big fact about the stock market and all of this is it is just mad gambling. People invest huge sums of money to try and get massive returns and through no fault of your own, that might not happen. And also by some huge stroke of luck, you might just end up a millionaire. Like the stock market is just a casino and financiers and hedge fund managers and all these firms have been treating it like one for years and years and years with your money. Like, where do you think they get all this stuff to play with from? Like they don't just magic it out of the air. These companies that invest in hedge funds usually take that money from out of the company that people are making for them or even, as could be a problem here, company pensions. Like that's a very real possibility for all of this. Six billion has been wiped off these hedge funds, but where does this money for the hedge funds come from? Like, yeah, fair enough, it's a billionaire's play thing. It's just kind of been thrown in there because they want to make even more money than all right, yeah, live by the sword, die by the sword. But if these companies are investing in these hedge funds, if they're putting money they shouldn't be putting in into these hedge funds, then eventually, yeah, those companies will go bust, which is one thing, but also the people who work for these companies, who have their pensions in these companies, who pay their mortgages, who feed their kids off the work they do for these companies, they could be the ones who suffer. We just don't know yet. And that's kind of the reason we're doing this video. What culture is covering a stock market story? Because it's gonna be huge like this is currently a gaming story because it centers around gamestop yeah yeah yeah. i know i know i know but this has far-reaching implications for everything like this is these are people who are not supposed to be getting rich off the stock market people who do not control how the financial sector works basically controlling how the financial sector works and if you think for one second there is not going to be legislation brought in to stop this ever happening again you are grossly mistaken. Like, yes, bankers gambled the entire property market in 2008 and bankrupted literal countries to the point we are still all feeling the burn of that right now and virtually nothing changed. A couple of people on Reddit managed to make a couple of hedge fund managers look like dicks everything is going to change. Or at the very least, everything to do with short is going to change. And if everything to do with short changes, then the entire way you play the stock market then inevitably has to change. So yes, it is a bombastic over-the-top headline, but gaming might just genuinely have broken the stock market. Certainly the stock market as we know it to be today. Like, this is going to be something that gets talked about for decades. Decades, decades, decades. So that is about as well as I can explain this whole situation. A load of very rich people thought they could get even richer off the misery of a company, and a load of people on Reddit went, lol, no. And here we are. Now look, as I said, this can't just happen again and again and again and again, but it is starting to happen for other companies as well because of how successful this has been. Like Nokia, BlackBerry, AMC, they are in bad positions as well. A lot of people have money invested in their stocks being shorted. And as a result, people are starting to buy up those stocks to try and drive the price up. Like I say, this could have happened at any point in history, but because of social media, because of Reddit, because of people finally just having enough, it's starting to happen now. And you can bet your sweet tush they're gonna do something to try and stop it. It's such an unpredictable, like all over the place situation as well. I guarantee you all the comments below this are just gonna be like, oh, you forgot about this, or oh, actually this is true, and oh, actually, what about all this? Because there's just so many different ways of thinking and schools of thought and just complicated extra levels to this because it's literally the stock market. Nobody really fully understands it or what's going to happen, but that is still about as well as I can explain it to you. So hopefully you've at least found that a bit enlightening. Anyway though, either way, let us know what you make of it in the comments below. Of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Get me on Twitter at Adam Cleary. I am fascinated by this stuff, so we'd genuinely like to hear your opinion over there. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I hope your brain has not dribbled out of your ears, and apologies that I am not literally Margot Robbie in a bathtub. And I'll see you soon. Goodbye.